In time, you will know the tragic extent of my failings. Welcome back, everyone, to Darkest Dungeon. The Badger was going to take you on an adventure towards where a suicide troop would go on and get mercilessly annihilated. Well, the problem is that didn't happen. Why didn't that happen? Because there were only two fights in the whole stage. We got a whole bunch of loot and uh, there was really nothing worth reporting. It was furiously unexciting because the game's RNG decided to throw nothing at us. So, I uh, decided to admit it. It was frightfully dull. You didn't miss much, just some people beating on each other. So our suicide squad remains until I decide that, you know, we don't need them anymore. However, something happened on our return. You can see here that um, Stan of Stone has left in search of a holy vision. That means he just decided randomly that he's going to wander off into the woods, searching for something to give him purpose. Also, good and Greg, I saw Stan of Stone walking into the woods and he was like, you know what? I think it would be totally great to abandon, shirk, and neglect my duties in the face of looking on a quest of personal hardship and pain, but it's not even them! Do I fucking left to do the same? Fuck you three! Are you just... I don't even think it's anything that holy. You're probably having a stupid orgy in the woods somewhere, and I'm not invited! What the fuck? God, okay, now that I've got that out of my system, we're not left with a great selection of heroes. So, starting off with the normal, we'll start into the stagecoach and see what we can obtain for ourselves. Also, uh, Brad Wine did not uh, do so well. So we're going to be ejecting them from our party because they went insane during the last fight. This one has become vestigial. Useless. To be fair, I may just throw them away and create another suicide squad later, but it depends. We have a selection of a Hellion, Houndmaster, and Leper. These are three classes I've been seeking. However, we are still in a frightful position of having no healer. So that is what we say in England. Fucking dandy. <sighs> For the time being, to increase our chances of um, obtaining a healer, I'm going to increase the stagecoach network. This will cost a lot of our resources. But who cares? Let's have a look through the stats. Night Owl, World Explorer. Uh, let's have a see here. Two plus speed if torch below 26. You are the woman for the job. And I have a good name for you. But I also don't have my pen and pad up. So uh, just one moment, please. Your name shall be henceforth known as Schmetterling. Oops, that's with caps lock on. Less caps, please. We here at the Badger Battalion appreciate good grammar. Fabulous. You are going to be an excellent fighter. I'm terribly excited to see what you can do. Yeah, that's a good uh, that's a good tone. I like that. I like that. Especially with the blood kind of color. You can join us. Get in my party. Barbaric rage and unrelenting savagery make for a powerful ally. The Leper class, a blue mania, a mania, obsessed with cleanliness, but with a hard noggin, and constantly on guard. Hmm. He grips his sword at all times. It looks as though he's experienced some frightful horror on the way here that has left him quite wary. But such qualities will prove positive in the near future. However, he is constantly wiping tables. Bit strange, but a welcome guest nonetheless. I suppose a bit more hygiene around here won't really harm our party, will it? So, your name shall be Lamar X L X I X. By the way, they do X's, it's pretty cool. However, he's going to need some work done on him before he can be useful. He understands that adversity and existence are one and the same. Okay, and the Houndmaster. 
armed, equipped with an entire dog. An entire dog that he can faithfully command to do his bidding and protect him. He has a very good precise striker ability. I'm not sure if the dog counts as a ranged weapon. It does. The dog counts as a ranged weapon. That's amazing. I don't think so personally, but I can't argue with the game. The only melee attack he has then is Blackjack, which stuns and does barely any damage. Great. However, cannot go to the cove in fright of much stress damage. What will your name be? We will call you, uh, let's have a see. We'll call you, hmm. Looking at my list, we'll call you Richard Wheel. A lawman and his faithful beast. A bond forged by battle and bloodshed. So now we have two extra buildings available to us. The Sanitarium. The Sanitarium treats quirks and diseases. It can remove bad quirks and reinforce good ones so they will not be removed should you gain too many positive quirks. Because what happens is that when you have a full list of quirks, it overwrites one at random. So if there's one you absolutely have to keep, you can pay to keep it. It's great, but I'm not quite sure if we have anyone that really needs to go just yet. We'll have a look at the remaining party that we won't bring with us. However, the blacksmith. The blast once again. The forge stands ready to make weapons of war. An almost dwarfish man coats a blade and polishes it. You can see almost the scorched hairs of his beard, the embers from the melting hot flame that he handles every day. Weary eyes look upon us, and smiles. But this business has proven most profitable. However, we lack crests to be able to upgrade our weaponsmithing to the next rank. What we'll do is, before we decide what we need to do, because we cannot upgrade our weapons and armor until they are at least level 1. And we don't know if we're actually going to bring anyone that is level 1. So in favor of saving money, we will see what is next. We have an option... We can go to the Weld, obtain some Greaves for the Arbalist, maybe head to the Warrens, get a Incense for the Occultist, a Medium Quest over at Cleanse. I'm not really interested in Medium, not without a healer. The Cove is also open to us, with a uh, Trinket for the, uh, for the Bounty Hunter. More Deeds as well, but Deeds are not truly what we seek right now. Nowhere offers crests, but they are frightfully common, so it should be okay. It's a short mission, so I think this will be a good choice. I have the selection. We're going to bring a full offense team, with Schmetterling leading the front, Lamar leading the second. Richard Wheel can perform quite well from the third or the back. However, who shall the fourth party member be? Actually, yeah, let's have you in the fourth slot. And Twangafar can come with us on this one. Extra speed, poison, noxious gases, and a minor heal, I believe. A very minor heal, but it might be better than nothing. For the time being, I would like to bring Dolan, but the problem with that is, is that, uh, frightfully so, that he is, um, how do I put this? I don't want to take experience away from some members. He's already got quite a bit of experience and I don't want to overlevel him because what happens should he reach level 3 is that he will stop going on apprentice level quests because it is beneath them. All characters will do this. There's absolutely no choice in the matter. So for the time being what we will be doing is we'll head to the world which I believe is a sort of poisonous area. We do have a numerous amount of trinkets which should prove quite useful. Minus dodge. Uh, let's have a see here. One moment while I just select what is best. Ah, yes, we also have this for the young plague doctor. Good. Very good. However, I'm quite reserved about wanting to use any of these. I do wish to, however, provide Dismas's head to the leper. I would normally give it to Schmetterling, but unfortunately a lot of their abilities seek to disturb to uh, reduce their damage, which actually no, it might be best if we do so. 
Hmm. We could either have a level amount or make Lamar. What's your damage? So with the trinket unequipped, how much damage can you perform? 8 to 16 damage. 6 to 12. Wow. Hmm. Really puts um, Sh uh, Schmetterling at a disadvantage there. Wait, what did I do? Wait, hold on a second. Wait, where did, where did the trinket go? Hello? What, where did my... Hello? Where did... Did I... Oh, wait, there it is. Okay, I freaked out. I thought I sold it for a moment. But when I equipped this, it brings them to about 815, bringing them much closer to, uh, to, um, uh, Lamar. However, hmm, it could be very useful because the best thing about the, um, about Schmetterling is that they have an ability, a melee ability, that can strike all the way in the back. This mighty woman with a halberd is ready for battle. And it could be very useful, in fact. Hmm. <laughs> Not only that, we also do have Hound's Rush that can reach any point in the party. We actually have a party that can hit pretty much anywhere at any given time. It's a really good setup. However, their abilities are somewhat lacking. So we're going to have to adjust them slightly. Let's have a see here. Yes, Lamar, you first. We need Hugh. Hugh strikes both the first and second uh, party members for a ridiculous amount of damage. One of my favorites, easily. We will keep, however, uh, what ability? We need sol uh, solemnity? I can't read that very well. It's uh, heal 6 HP. It's the only heal we're going to get, so I'm going to take it. Best thing. Schmetterling also needs a little bit of an upgrade. While I do like if it bleeds and breakthrough... I am going to require, I feel like, Barbaric Yorp, and maybe, um, which stuns the first two enemies, could be very useful. Bleed Out is also very good, but that one can wait. What we'll do is we'll take Iron Swan and Barbaric Yorp. Let's have a see here. We'll remove Adrenaline Rush, which can be quite good. However, I'm looking for more utility from um, our friend Schmetterling. We'll take that. Uh, breakthrough, while good, does reduce a lot of damage. Yeah, we'll take this selection of skills. Allows them to do bleed, stun, hit the back of their party, and also strike for a decent amount with a 5% crit modifier. Not bad. Let's have a see here. We also need to get Richard Wheel up to speed as well. We'll go for Hound's Harry. And what else is there? There is also an ability, Cry Havoc, which allows you to uh, stress heal. And also Guard Dog. Hmm. That could be very good. He can't use Blackjack at that point in the party. Uh, let's have a see here. Yeah, no, everything else seems quite well. Unfortunately, while we could have Target Whistle, which benefits well with um, Hound's Rush, actually, it does quite well. Actually, it does a lot of damage. Yeah, we'll keep, we'll keep the whistle because it allows Hound's Rush to do extra damage against beasts and 60% extra damage against the marked. Wow. Wow. That's, that's amazing. Brilliant. As for our friend Twangafar, however, speaking of which, we do not have enough crests to upgrade. Great, because we could probably actually upgrade some of this, which would be very beneficial. I may actually try to sacrifice some of these bus in favor. Yes, that's good. That's very good. There we go. We'll transfer 10 bus into becoming crests so that we can upgrade. Every has a weakness. The wise hero trains for what he will face. Now, the healing ability can heal up to two damage. That can be excellent. Emboldening Vapors can also be very fantastic, but I'm, uh, the thing is, is that in this next area, actually, no, no, we won't take Embolden. We won't take Noxious Blast, which does Noxious damage to the front two of the party, because the next upcoming area is very Blight heavy. They'll have high resistances to Blight, so we'll leave it at that. I feel confident, prepared, so bloody ready. Um, actually, your quirks are fine. Uh, there's no one else really to cure. Okay, everyone's fine. I may throw out the abominations, but I haven't decided yet. We're not going to blow our cash on them, though. This has been 15 minutes of me doing nothing but explaining. So, let's prepare on to the world. Oh, you're back. <laughs> the caretaker cackles. Not dead yet, are you? We cast almost sarcastic glances at him. 
Our friend, uh, Richard Wheel, uh, smiles upon him, unknowing as to the quirks of the strange, peculiar individual. We'll take ten, ten food, as I'm looking to come back quite relatively unharmed. Bring a couple of these and three sho- uh, no, two shovels, along with a, a couple of- no, a key and, uh, yes, yes, this seems like a good combination. Take about this much, and set off. Corruption has soaked the soil, sapping all good life from these groves. Let us burn out this evil. The smell of rotting flesh overpowers our senses. The dog shudders in disgust, whimpering all the while. They look upon the decrepit houses, bovine skulls and rotting, decaying villages. Happy families once ate here. No longer. Darkness closes in, haunting the hearts of men. Preparing a scouting event, we find that there are enemies to our south. And since our mission is to wipe out the undead Scourge, we'll have to go in this direction as well. Applying anti-venom to the old tree cleans it, allowing a thorough search. Trinkets and baubles, paid for in blood. A cultist acolyte wandered here from the ruins, supporting the fungal scratchers. They're ready to fight. The fungal scratchers have 33% protection, meaning they are quite hardy. They're ripped fungal bodies. How do I put this? The, the fungus upon their skin serves as an armor, rigid with rigor mortis. Our entire purpose is to strike down the cultist before they could do too much undue damage to our minds yet again. However, we fail. We also fail, however, because I have not equipped the correct skills. Badger laments desperately. But all we could do is strike. We set a target upon the Acolyte, priming the dog for battle. A deep cut gashes into the breast of the Acolyte, blood spurting into the back of the, uh, the fungal horrors. Groping swipe strike at the front of the party, but that's all they can reach. We boost the powers of the Canine Hound, readying it, priming it for absolute devastation. A barbaric yawp is let out! Schmetterling stuns the twin fungal creatures, mitigating our damage for some time. And for all we prepare, the Acolyte is let to live another day! Dragging Richard towards the foray, making Lamar utterly useless. Richard tries to catch his breath, sweat pouring from his face. Was that a human being we just killed? Were they truly so evil? We can only but hope. Blood gushes from the body, who unbeknownst to its own, own self, knows not of the creature that it's become. Despite its sentience, the soul has long left. Stumbling into the party, they elbow Lamar into the, into the chest, his breastplate becoming dented with their overwhelming strength. The smell of fungus re uh, remains upon their skin. A deep cut into the skin, wedging the blade into its shoulder. Lamar sticks his foot into the chest of the fungal creature to erase his blade, to take it back from its corpse. So rigid and thick, it's hard to get a clean cut. As the 
fiend falls, a faint hope blossoms. The beast chews upon the arm, gripping it from its from its frail corpse. Blood spatters and spills upon along the ground, as if it'd been raining red. Though Richard does have to pull the dog back before it chews any further, lest it upsets its intestines with the flesh of the corrupt. The utility of schmetterling is proving most useful in such a situation. Their formation is broken. Maintain the offensive. The battle was heavy, for being so only the first one. Who knows what else awaits us? Packs laden with loot are often low on supplies. Troopish horrors scutter along the floor, scare, you know, chittering, coming from their fangs, acid dripping from their rancid moors. They spatter a web upon Richard, coating him in a sticky mildew. They see this as a target, spattering acid upon his flesh, protecting... But Richard moves in defense of his canine friend, protecting it from the rancid acid. The dog can only look up, whimpering to his owner's suffering. So beautiful is the bond between beast and man. Mitigating the damage, we seek to stun the spiders. Swiftly drinking an anti-venom, we decide to use our ability to heal our wounds, cuddling up to the dog and seeking some solace from this evil world. However, the pain piles on. Another abomination cleansed from our lands. Such frail creatures fall to our blades. The mighty crack claymore wedges straight through the body and cleaves it cleanly, separating several legs in the process. They raise the claymore over their shoulder triumphantly. A hollow cackle is heard beneath the staunched mask. Another one falls. The dog chews upon the flesh of the spider flailing it side to side, spit dripping from the mouth of its maw. The spider only skitter, you know, twitches, gasps, and then dies. Be gone, fiend. Truly a victory for the ages, for man has always triumphed against the insects. A map of the area is found. However, it does nothing, for we've already scouted. Not positive, but we'll have to deal with it. We come acro uh, across a grave site. We take to our shovels and dig. A fortune. Waiting to be spent. Revealing gems, baubles, paintings, and crests. What a profitable haul. But uh, up front, we see a battle on coming. The silhouette of two skeletons and a slime. It's a shame for our play grenades do so little against uh, those that are made of pure toxicity. However, blades have always made a handy backup under most circumstances. Under all circumstances. Press this advantage. Give them no quarter. A club plinks off the jerk breastplate of Lamar, 
He looks at the skeleton like, really? This is what we were so afraid of? Continue the onslaught. Be gone from our sight! Before we enter this room, we have, uh, we have done enough for today. We will see you for the next episode of Darkest Dungeon. See you then, everyone. <laughs>